Hey Rail fans, what's more relaxing on a Sunday morning than coffee and watching trains? So let's do that. Find a spare couple of minutes and grab a beverage. It's Sunday morning coffee and trains with Deanne. My coffee mug today is a clue about both where Railfan Depot is located and what railroad we're going to Railfan today. This is a Monon Railroad mug I picked up at a Monon Railroad Historical Society convention. Every mile of Monon-owned track was inside the great state of Indiana, and that's where Railfan Depot is located. Let's take a look at the Hoosier Line. In its final years, the railroad's corporate title was simply Monon. In prior years, Monon was a nickname for the Chicago, Indianapolis, and Louisville Railroad. The railroad defined the letter X on the Indiana map. The crossing of the X taking place at the little town of Monon. It was an Indian word for swift running water, and the railroad translated it simply as swift running. In order to reach the passenger stations in the three largest cities it served, the Monon had to use trackage rights on other lines. Into Chicago, it ran on the Chicago and Western Indiana from the state line to Dearborn Station in downtown Chicago. Indianapolis, once the hub of a vast electric interurban network, was the Monon's southern terminal for one side of the X, the railroad described on the Hoosier map. The Chicago passenger trains reached downtown Indianapolis on the tracks of the Indianapolis Union Railway, where passengers used the Indianapolis Union Station. However, there was a time when Monon coaches reached Cincinnati by way of the Cincinnati, Hamilton, and Dayton Railway. And years after there were no more Monon passenger trains, those who refurbished the old Union Station included cars from the steam era in a display which honored the Chicago, Indianapolis, and Louisville Railroad, the Monon route, with its famous train, the Hoosier. Now, the Monon crossed the Ohio River on the rails of the Kentucky and Indiana Terminal Railroad to and from New Albany. Here is the Louisville Union Station in the early 1960s when the LNN was running the Civil War Locomotive General. In 1946, the federal court in Chicago approved a reorganization plan which set up a new corporation, the Chicago, Indianapolis, and Louisville. The new board of directors installed as president a career railroad man, John W. Berriger III and the Monon entered its highly colorful and enthusiastic years, which historians call the Berriger era. Well, thus, John Berriger became the third most conspicuous head of the railroad, and he announced that the Monon would be a guinea pig as a model of a super railroad. It was the beginning of the major effort by the railroads of the nation to change from steam power to diesel power, and the Monon became one of the first class one roads to change completely. 54 units did the job of changeover between 1946 and 1948. In fact, the diesels arrived on the line before the railroad had managed to re-equip its passenger trains. And the diesels were seen pulling the old standard heavyweight passenger coaches. The Monon, as with other rail lines, had to figure the passenger trains were a loss leader, that the real economic base of the railroad was its freight service. President Berriger's efforts at making the Monon a super railroad went much further than just fine passenger trains. The roadbed was improved. The diesel locomotive fleet was complete by the end of 1948, so that there no longer were steam locomotives on the roster. Among the early purchases were RS2 and BL2 locomotives. As for the BL2, it was a case of beauty being in the eye of the beholder but it was a versatile locomotive, handling both freight and passenger runs as well as yard chores.
There goes a rare EMD BL2. The BL stood for branch line. While EMD had high hopes for this unit, the Monon was one of just a few railroads that opted for this power. One of the unusual portions of the Lions Roadbed was the Paisley Trussell, which was a floating structure built over what appeared to be a bottomless bog near Cedar Lake. But when President Berger took over, he realized that one of his new diesels could disappear if it derailed on the trussle. So the trussle and the line around the edge of Cedar Lake was moved farther west to higher ground. Did you enjoy train watching with me? We do this every Sunday morning. Stop by on our channel on Sunday or make it easy on yourself and hit subscribe. Hit that bell. It'll let you know when we're rail fanning. Eventually it was seen that the passenger service once with four trains a day out of Chicago had to end. The passenger service now had gone to only one train a day and that carried an average of 63 passengers per trip. On September 29, 1967, the last Monon passenger train out of Dearborn Station was covered by the... Uh, Forty years ago when I attended Purdue University and then Wabash College, I was constantly on the Monon going back and forth to see girls at the other end of the line always. And you used the Monon to... I, su I supported the railroad then. <laughs> I expect to cry my beer all the way down to Louisville and back. <laughs> Like trains? Then like us for more and follow or subscribe to get all the good stuff as soon as it's released.